Hello there. A government minister has come out and said that gloomy economic forecasts could be used to reverse Brexit. A government minister says that if gloomy economic forecasts are proven to be anywhere near right, then Brexit could be reversed. Talking about the leaked report that claims that the UK would suffer a decline under three Brexit scenarios, a Justice Minister, Dr Philip Lee, said over a series of tweets, The next phase of Brexit has to be all about the evidence. We can't just dismiss this and move on. If there is evidence to the contrary, we need to see and consider that too. But if these figures turn out to be anywhere near right, there would be a serious question over whether a government could legitimately lead a country along a path that the evidence and rational consideration indicate would be damaging. This shows the PM's challenge. The PM has been dealt some tough cards and I support her mission to make the best of them. It's time for evidence, not dogma, to show the way. We must act for our country's best interests, not ideology and populism, or history will judge us harshly. Our country deserves no less. But of course this will be of no surprise, as Dr Lee is a Remainer at heart, having backed the Remain side in the run-up to the 2016 EU referendum. But it will unsettle his party colleagues, and he has already had a dressing down from the Whip's office, reports the Mail, saying that a Downing Street source said that he had been reprimanded. He's been spoken to by the Chief Whip. He has been reminded he can best air his views in private, said the source. He was asked to air his views in private in future. And hinting that the MP for Bracknell should resign his ministerial position, Tory MP Andrew Bridgen said, The Chief Whip needs to impose collective responsibility discipline across the government. If he wants to espouse his own views, then he should be on the back benches where he would be free to do so. His comments are inaccurate. He said if there is any truth in these figures, but the fact is there is not. They will be proved wrong again. It is an attempt to undermine Brexit Minister Steve Baker's response on behalf of the government to the urgent question yesterday. Now in my video yesterday I pointed out that these reports should be viewed with a healthy dose of scepticism and I also referred to a University of Cambridge working paper that highlighted flaws when using economic gravity modelling for Brexit reports. Please do watch it. And the former Tory leader, Ian Duncan Smith, said of Dr Lee, He knows whether these figures are right, does he? There is a big if in there. This report is from the same people that produced every failed report so far. It uses the same model and is therefore very limited, does not deal with all the eventualities and therefore should be dismissed out of hand. Many of these Remain supporting MPs like Dr Lee will be looking at the majority they got last election and figuring that they will win the next one, whatever. Dr Lee won 58.8% of the vote in 2017, an unassailable position one would think. But in the EU referendum his constituents voted by 53.9% to 46.1% to leave the EU. So would he be right to be relying on party loyalty? But one also has to ask who commissioned this report and why was it commissioned to cover only those limited areas? Whatever the merits of the report, it looks like the government will be making it public anyway after calls from Labour and Remain Tories to release it, with Ken Clark saying there was a rather curious cult of secrecy around the government's approach to this issue which I find rather humorous given all the lies told to the UK public about the EU over the decades. You know, like no EU army, when we now find out there are long-term plans for a complete EU army, navy and air force, as well as a foreign policy. Then there's the one about the EU not making any of our laws, 
But now we find out that there are so many EU laws that never went through our Houses of Parliament that our House of Lords says it's all too complicated. Let alone all the forebodings of destruction, should we have the temerity to even put a cross in the leave box? Emergency budgets, hundreds of thousands of job losses, instant collapse of the state, etc. I'll leave it to commenters to complete that list. Moving on, claims are being made that the real reason that Angela Merkel opened the EU border to so many migrants was not because of some sort of cheesy Mother Teresa moment, but because of an impending euro currency crisis. Writing in the German newspaper the FAZ, a Bremen-based political scientist, Philipp Manau, said that the opening of the border was the almost inevitable protection of the Greece deal. With the sudden influx of refugees into Greece, had its institutions collapsed under the strain, billions of euros might have been lost. So it seems that Merkel effectively eased the strain on Greece by diluting the problem across the EU in order to save the euro. But the real sticking point is that not all EU countries are in the eurozone. So why was the attempt made to sweep all EU countries, like the UK, into bailing out the euro in this manner? Hungary has its own currency and lost a court case over not taking its fair share of asylum seekers, remember? So, what do you think? Please leave a comment below. Thank you. Please do like and share this video. And also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.